Yeah, welcome to the next session uh, of the grammatical theory lecture. Today we will capture feature description, feature structures, and models. Um, this is where we are in the overall uh, lecture. Um, we introduced basic terms, talked about phrase structure grammar, government and binding, generalized phrase structure grammar was the first alternative model we looked at and now we are looking at feature description descriptions <coughs> feature structures and models and that's uh, um, basically the formal apparatus that is used in many of the series um, that we will discuss in the following um, lexical functional grammar headroom phrase structure grammar uh, are using it um, and there are also uh, variants of category grammar that use uh, feature descriptions and feature structures and tree adjoining grammar as well. So that's sort of, an, I put it into a special session and a special chapter in the book um, because it plays a role in more than one of the series we are talking about. Okay, the reading material for you is chapter six of the grammar theory textbook. And um, yeah, we will start with uh, some terminology. Um, sometimes people don't make a difference between feature structures and feature descriptions. I make this distinction here, and uh, feature structures are. Um, devices, theoretical constructs uh, used to um, model linguistic objects. So a model is like, um, yeah, something that, that you know as a model, like a model of a little chip or a model of, uh, of a landscape. Um, and it's usually smaller so <laughs> that, that you can see something. Uh, and we sort of do the same for, for linguistic utterances and say, okay, um, we, we do not model every detail of the little uh, linguistic utterance, but certain aspects. And um, for this model, we want to have descriptions. And um, that's what you get when you look at uh, theories like HPC, for instance, you have these uh, bracket expressions and that's a feature description. We will talk about that in, in a minute. And it describes uh, how uh, the, the model, uh, the, the properties of the model. Okay, so alternative uh, names for feature structures are attribute value structure uh, or um, yeah, feature structure that's the most common. And uh, for the feature descriptions, we have attribute value matrix or feature matrix. AVM is a common uh, abbreviation. There are several uh, books and papers about uh, the formal underlying, the underlying formalism uh, used by HPSG or Kadigoya grammar and, and so on. These families of, uh, family of theories. Um, the easiest is probably Stuart Schiebert, uh, Schieber's work from 86, a CSLI a publications book uh, published in the CSLI lecture notes series. Uh, <coughs> there, <coughs> there are some introductory remarks in Pollard and Sarg in the 87 book. And then there is a book by Mark Johnson and Carpenter, uh, is an, a, a big book about formal things and, and feature description and structures. And uh, they, are, they, they are making slightly different assumptions. So if you want to know what uh, current theories are using, um, you may easily get confused by looking at all of these. Um, the, as for HPSG, they use the King and Richter uh, work nowadays uh, as the formal foundations and um, yeah if you if you are interested in this you can uh, read um, Frank Richter's 
chapter in the forthcoming HPSG handbook um, where he also compares uh, different approaches and uh, explains what the current assumptions are. Um, these, most of these books, maybe with the exception of Stuart Schieber's uh, work, are um, technical. So if you are afraid of mathematics, you shouldn't uh, touch them. Um, the important point about um, formalization and, and linguistic theory is that, that somebody did that work, right? So it's done. We know what these brackets mean, the, the feature and description that, that we will look at in a minute. And that's very important because that means that the linguistic series we will look at have a formal foundation that is solid. So there are other frameworks um, where you don't know what what the series mean, so what people write in their papers, so it's unclear because the foundations are not worked out. That's not the case for HPSG and LFG and uh, category grammar and tag, so they have solid formal foundations and we know what we are talking about. Um, okay, let's look at feature descriptions at an example. So the most um, straightforward example is uh, a feature, I think, is a feature structure, a feature description for a human being. So that it, it's basically, if you know programming languages, it's like a record in a programming language, right? So you have um, uh, a feature and a value, and this is first name and the value is Max, and then you have another feature, last name, and the value is Maya. And you have a feature date of birth, and there you have a, um, a date of birth. Okay. Um, now the fun thing is that you can have recursive description descriptions, um, where you have, uh, in addition to what we saw here in this description, uh, a feature for father. And the value of father is again uh, a person, right? So it's the same kind of uh, object uh, there and it has the same features, right? And you have a mother feature um, uh, and of course, uh, Peter, the father of Max also has a father and a mother and so on. Um, now the an interesting question to think about is uh, what about daughters or sons? So if you started to model a human being and then you want to model the aspect that there are sort of daughters and sons. Um, yeah, I, I just pause the presentation here and think about how to do it and then go on when you have some idea. Okay, did you do that? Think about it. Okay, um, so the first solution is um, that you assume uh, a special feature for daughters. So I sort of primed this, uh, or the this answer was sort of primed by having father and mother you think okay the the max uh, unit here um, has a daughter as well so let's put a daughter feature here okay um what do we do if we have several daughters hmm okay again think about it and then uh, go on and maybe you came up with a solution where you just have daughter one, daughter two, daughter three. Um, that's an interesting solution and it works to some extent, but um, the question is uh, where is the limit, right? Um, so, um, <laughs> What, what kind of questions can we ask about persons, right? Is it, does it make sense to ask uh, about daughter 32? And what will the answer be, right? So how do you do that, right? So if somebody answer, uh, asks a question about daughter 32, is the, there a value um, like 
no or something or um, is uh, is there an arbitrary limit that you say okay there can be uh, only seven so in earlier times um, uh, I think the 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 limit per per woman is seven or something but the families were had more children um because men had several women um so so where is the limit and um uh when when i give this lecture with real humans i mean you are also a real human but i don't see you um then i always ask um whether uh, you know Screaming Jay Hawkins, and um, do you know him? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, if, if you don't know him, you may know uh, the movie Stranger Than Paradise. And um, I was tempted to, to include that into this lecture, but I didn't, but uh, the lecture is on YouTube and I put together a playlist on, on YouTube uh, where all the things that are referred to in the lecture uh, are collected, so non-linguistic stuff. And there is a, a video, it was, uh, I put a spell on you, um, the, the song that uh, features prominently in uh, Stranger Than Paradise um, is in, in the video playlist, so you can watch it there. And the the guy who sings the song that's screaming jay hawkins and if you know neither the movie stranger than paradise nor screaming jay hawkins you have to go to the cinema the first thing they they open again and watch that movie it's a very good one and uh the music of course as well so Long, long story. Um, the uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins died some years ago, and when he died, uh, there were press uh, statements about his children. And um, so, what I read back then was that he had sixty-two uh, children. I now looked that up in uh, Wikipedia, and it um, they say uh, there were thirty-five or so uh actually meeting once um and um some claim that he had up to 75 children okay so this uh i mean it's crazy right it's he was a crazy guy great one so otherwise he wouldn't get that that many children probably but um anyway so so the the point is that you don't want to have uh, a limit on uh, 30 daughters right or whatever um, so there may be another way a better way to do that and um, the this is the second solution that you have a list right so um, you, you just have a list um, of persons and they contain information like first name last name and so on uh, person objects now um, and another question is, what do we do about sons? Well, okay, uh, once we are here, uh, we can extend that and say, okay, uh, we have a, a son feature or a son's feature. Um, but um, that's not, not such a nice solution because then we would model the, the gender of the persons uh, we have in this list uh, in, in the feature names here, right? So that would say uh, daughter and, um, uh, and son. But um, the important thing is that we want to have, um, it, it, we want to model the gender as a property of the modeled object, right? So we want to say, okay, Max is male or female or whatever. Right, and um, um, if we have that, we can just have a children list. So then the, the uh, person uh, would go in here, and since they have a gender, we have that information in the list. So you may object and say, yeah, but we have father and mother, so why not having parents instead? And uh, then they have uh, a certain gender. Um, that's okay. Um, 
And interestingly, we will uh, see the same, uh, we, we will run into the same type of problem in, in linguistics, um, whether we want to encode something in the, in the feature names or uh, in uh, features of modeled objects that, that are part of the value. And um, the, the question is, um, do we, do we want to single out the mother, for instance, or is it enough to have it in a list of uh, parents? So for instance, if we want to model like, like genetic inheritance or something, then we could say, okay, certain properties only get inherited from the mother. So we can say that the features that the mother has uh, are identified with some features of the person we are modeling. So that would be more easy if we have a mother feature um, that uh, where we know, okay, the value here is the, the, the properties of the mother. And um, that would not be that easy if we just had a list and somewhere in this list would be the mother. Um, we, we will see things like that if we look, when we look at HPG. So in HPG, we have a head, uh, a head daughter um, and uh, other daughters and there are pointers to, to the head daughter. So it's head daughter, something like, like the mother. Okay, um, that's list. And the next important thing to talk about are types. Um, the feature structures um, that we will be talking about soon, the, the models uh, are of a certain type. Um, types are written in italics, so uh, in the format I'm using, the type is at the left upper corner, and we have uh, then attribute one and value one. Um, types specify which features uh, uh, necessarily belong to a certain feature structure, and um, they are organized in hierarchies. So an example is given here, that's a, a part of speech type hierarchy. So we have a most general type part of speech, and then we have subtypes, adjective, adverb, determiner, noun, preposition, verb, right? So these, these type hierarchies are very important in some theories like HPC and construction grammar, um, because you can have very general types and then subtypes um, that are specializations of, uh, of the general types that's parallel to ontologies that, that human u humans use to organize their knowledge. Uh, let's assume that for our example, uh, let's, let's look at our example again and uh, look at the type um, that we could uh, use here. So, uh, um, the descriptions we have uh, describe persons, so the type would be a uh, person. And um, that means that uh, in our model, if we decide that we want to model these features, uh, all uh, structures of type person have to have a first name, a last name, date of birth, gender, father, mother, and children uh, features. And these uh, things have to have values. Okay, um, now the, the interesting thing is that this is like a, like a design specification and um, other things are not relevant. So you cannot ask uh, what is the operating voltage of max? Because that's not a um, sensible question to ask of uh, um, persons or people. Um, and um, the, the it, it's not part of the model and therefore you cannot ask this kind of questions and uh, you can also, you cannot specify it here. It just doesn't 
fit it's incompatible and um the when, when we talk about uh, humans then we know that they have these properties we know that they have a date of birth uh, but it may be the case that we we don't know the exact value but we know so you probably have a date of birth uh, but um, i don't know it okay so the next tricky question is if we look at um, uh, feature description of this kind uh, with Max Meyer here with a certain birthday and Max Meyer has a father um, the the father has a child named Klaus and then Max has a mother uh, <coughs> and um, uh, with name Anna and uh, Anna also has a child named Klaus. So the question I want you to think about is, um, is it, uh, is this one child or is it two children? So again, you may stop here and uh, think about this question. Um, the answer is, we don't know. So it could be the same, um, but it could also be two different children from earlier uh, partnerships. And um, I, well, you know, just two uh, person, two, two people meeting uh, each other um, and fell in love and then they, they already have uh, two children with the same name, so that wouldn't be a, a barrier to live together, right? So then they are just in bad luck and have uh, two clauses or clause, as we would say in German. Um, uh, just a week ago, I learned about a Wikipedia page uh, about uh, first names in German and lawsuits uh, that are documented there where people try to give funny names to their uh, children. And for instance, Jihad is a, a, a legitimate uh, name uh, for, a fem uh, for a male person in Germany. So there is a law case about that. Um, uh, what I learned from that page is that uh, in Turingia, it was allowed to give the same name to your children. So if you have uh, two uh, male uh, children, then you could name both of them Klaus, and then the you would have to have you would have to use additional adjectives like uh, Groß Klaus and Klein Klaus. Okay, so funny things in the history of German. Um, or Germany uh, rather. Um, so if you see two uh, objects with the name Klaus here, you don't know whether it's the same or uh, uh, not. And of course in series we want to make the distinction um, sometimes and there is some tool to do that. That's the the little boxes here, right? So uh, it's what you see here is called structure sharing and um, uh, the, this little one is you can you can think about it like like some pointer to some value uh, in that is stored somewhere in a computer memory or something right so this basically says if you come here and uh, look what is the child of the mother of max yeah, so you go to mother, children, and you see the one here, and you say, ah, okay, um, I have to look for another occurrence of one, uh, this one, so the value is, this is identical to this, so Klaus is a child of uh, Anna, right? So it's, it's the same Klaus uh, who is a child of Peter and of Anna. Okay, um, now the the interesting question is, um, we never talked about that so far. Um, this, this Max here is also a child of uh, Peter and Anna. 
So how would you do that? Um, so how, how can we encode that in this structure? Uh, it, since it is a child or he is a child, uh, it should be in here somehow, right? So again, you may think about how to do that. And the nice solution is uh, given here. Um, you again use structure sharing and say that this child is of course the same of both parents uh, because Max has Peter as father and Anne as Anna as mother. And the funny thing is that the two appears here in front of the whole structure. So the whole object is uh, the child of Peter and also the child of Anna. And what you get by this is uh, cyclic feature structures or feature descriptions in this case. So if you uh, walk in here and look at the father, uh, fathers, children, um, the, the second element and of this element, the father and then the children and the second element. So you can run in circles, right? That's a cyclic uh, description. And that comes in handy in certain situations. So in HPHD, we need it for the uh, um, verb position analysis for something that's similar to uh, GB's verb movement. And um, yeah, you will remember this uh, explanation here of the cyclic feature structures or feature descriptions. Okay, so the next uh, part of uh, this brief introduction to feature descriptions is about unification. Um, there, you have to be careful here because um, uh, a lot of these so-called constraint-based theories uh, do not use unification actually. So they use constraints uh, and do something with the, with the constraints. Um, but the, the broad characterization of this class of uh, theories is sometimes uh, unification-based, so they are called unification-based. And that's where everything is coming from historically. And therefore I want to uh, introduce this concept uh, for you. Uh, and it's also helpful to understand most of the things that are uh, going on in, in the series we will look at in the following sessions. GPSG as well, uh, actually. Okay, so um, in LFG, HPSG, and also in some versions of TAG, uh, grammatical roots and lexical items are described by feature descriptions. And um, the, the grammatical roots contain partial descriptions uh, of their daughter. So you say, um, my, my daughter has to be uh, something nominal, right? And it has to be saturated as far as valence is concerned. But uh, you don't say it has to be a pronominal, a pronominal or it has to be uh, an NP consisting of determinant noun and so on. So you are not specific as far as these things are concerned or you don't specify the phonology, uh, phonological information and so on. So you have a partial description of what is expected in, in the daughters uh, of a certain tree. And um, the, the phrase that will be used as a daughter has to be compatible with the description in, in the grammar rule or in the schema. And uh, this compatibil compatibility uh, is also called unifiability. And the, when, when you enter the, the, the daughter into uh, the schema, then you can talk about unification, right? So the description of the, the daughter and the daughter that you are insert there um, have to match. That's unification. Um, okay, let's... Uh, uh, yeah, so, so the, the informal description of unification is that the result of unifying two structures is something that contains all information of the two unified structures, but nothing in addition. So that's the informal um, 
uh, definition and we want to look at one example uh, in the next part and that's a, an, another um, example of high um, high culture german high culture um, the the example i use here uh, is uh, a detective agency and there was a trash movie in the 80s called müllers büro um, i also linked it in the playlist on on youtube uh, it's available uh, as a full movie uh, on youtube and um, it's basically german schlager uh they they sing the whole movie and um yeah so so the example here is uh, inspired by that movie if you feel bored in this online uh, semester you may watch that movie as well but watch the uh, stranger than paradise first okay um a, a possible description for for our search uh, profile so we are looking for um, a blonde female person so that what happened in in that movie she was called maya um, a, a, a possible description would be we are looking for a person maya female blonde and um, the if the detective returns something uh, says look i i found i found him uh, he, he is male and has red hair and is called maya then that that is not what we want right so then the the detective is um, a loser and doesn't know his job so that that is our minimal requirement that has to fit whatever the detective is turning up with um so that would be much better right so um katarina maya uh, is uh, so that that is new katarina right so it, it, we didn't know that and he also found out the date of birth so that's a good result um they they she may have more properties uh, than what we knew before but what they uh, the, the, these new properties have to be compatible um, or the the whole set of properties has to be compatible with what we knew already so uh, to give an example of unification if we have this uh, as our search request request and we have this as the information that the detective has in his files then the unification of these two things is this right so it's this is compatible with this and there's additional information here so it's um uh there's an e missing but apart from that uh this is the unification um what we what would not be okay is if the uh, detective returns something uh, where he claimed okay uh, katarina maya doesn't have any children because um he actually doesn't know that it's he has no evidence for that so that is not legitimate so he he's not allowed to to make things up i mean we know that presidents do make things up but detectives are not supposed to do it Okay, that was unification. We need that uh, when, for further uh, sessions with linguistic series. Um, one final slide about phenomena, models, and formal theories. This is philosophical stuff. If you don't like it or you don't understand it, uh, just forget it. But um, that's sort of say the the so to say the the underlying philosophical assumptions um, that we have uh, feature descriptions that is basically what we will look at, at our formal theory then we have uh, the the model that is um, linguistic objects that are modeled by feature structures the feature structures in in hpg are assumed to be total so uh, the the values of uh, features so every every uh, feature has a value so there must be 
something, some specification, and it must be uh, maximal. So like uh, if you have uh, hair color uh, and there are possible values like uh, green, blonde, uh, brown, and red, then it must be one of these um, four, right? And um, uh, so that, that's basically everything that is possible in a certain space. And um, if we, so, so in, in linguistics, that may, may be sentences um, where you have a verb and a noun, right? And you just basically say, okay, there is a part of speech and that uh, the value could be that or that. And then you have uh, a formal theory, feature descriptions that tell you, okay, if you have like a subject and a verb, then their features on, on person and number have to agree and things like that, right? So, so these feature descriptions determine how uh, the feature structures may look like. And uh, these are licensed by the theory and the, the feature structures, the model, uh, model actually uh, actual linguistic phenomena. So linguistic objects out in the wild, so to say. So if I speak uh, to you, uh, this is, uh, I produce linguistic objects and um, then I, then we could go on and model them and develop a theory that uh, constrains these models. And uh, the interesting thing is that the formal theory predicts that certain phenomena are possible, right? So um, uh, you, you can have a look into, the, into my paper about Coagram, uh, where I also give examples of uh, predictions that uh, an HPG theory made, uh, which I was not aware of, right? So I put together some, um, uh, uh, a formal theory about German and it, this theory predicted that certain examples are possible, which I didn't know. So that, that's a good thing actually about uh, formal theories. And you can then also test whether the predictions are correct, right? So you, that as, as you saw in the phrase structure grammar uh, session, uh, grammars can generate uh, utterances. Uh, strings, and then you can check uh, are these acceptable or not, right? So the, a good formal theory makes predictions. Okay, um, <clears throat> this was it. That was the introduction to uh, feature descriptions, feature structures, and models. There, is a, there are some homeworks for you uh, where you can apply this knowledge, um, develop uh, descriptions for instruments, uh, part of speech hierarchies, and uh, things like deal with lists. So I will not read all these uh, uh, exercises to you. They are also in the book. Um, the, the exercise four is more difficult. It's for advanced uh, students who have um, uh, some idea about formal things. So this is uh, the session about formal under uh, formal uh, machinery, the formal underpinnings of our series. The next um, session will be about lexical functional grammar, and we will use uh, feature descriptions and feature structures there. So thank you very much for your attention uh, today, and see you in a week.